guys welcome back to the channel today is going to be a little bit different episode i'm going to answer some of you guys' questions and i'm also going to show you a little bit of the property that we're building on and i'm going to tell you why we're doing all of this so first let's answer some questions because then i got to go inside because it's too windy out here the number one question i get is why am i not framing any eaves on my house so you can see as we go around the house there are no eaves on this house it looks like matt reisinger would say a monopoly home so the reason i did that is because the biggest one of the biggest uh, locations where you lose heat uh, in the winter and you get heat coming into your space during the uh, summer are the eaves it's the rafter tails that stick out of your house because when you frame these rafters these rafters usually just run along and stick out which means in between each rafter and especially if you're 16 on center which is every 14 and a half inches you have a potential space for heat to enter and heat to leave so when heat rises and it hits those rafter tail areas it can escape through those rafter tails because you have a seam every 14 inches what i'm doing is i am zip taping my my zip walls to my zip ceiling my zip decking um, and that way it gives me a complete envelope around my entire house now the next step is going to be insulate the inside of the house as well as insulate the exterior of the house with rigid foam I was already planning on insulating the roof because we're doing a metal roof and it quiets the roof and gives you some insulation and it's giving me the ability to not need to vent my attic space so all of what I'm doing one because we have vaulted ceilings in there gives me the ability to not have to vent any of my attic space I can condition my entire envelope two it gives me the ability to have double insulation on the roof and inside and potentially on the walls if we can afford it so that's the reason the main reason why we are not putting eaves on the house and we are going to frame them later um, i'll go into depth on that video when we're at that point in the build so if you haven't please subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when i drop new videos look at me i'm getting the hang of this youtube thing uh the next question is why did i choose pier and beam and uh, why does it look so janky so right now it's just purely the piers um, and the beams. I don't have any type of skirt around it. We are actually building an eight foot porch around the entire uh, portion of this house. Um, so I'm waiting to get all that done. And then we're going to be putting a skirt all the way around uh, the house. And I put these, you might see these two by sixes sticking off the beams that look all janky. I actually put that there for uh, um, fastening purposes. It has no structural value. It's just there for, for um, my plan down the road, which again, if you guys subscribe, you'll see that video as well. Um, and I think, let's see, those were those two questions. Um, the next question is, where did I learn to do what I do? Um, I've been in construction. My dad was a flooring carpenter and I helped him remodel homes uh, or rental properties. And then I worked in construction for a few years and then eventually actually opened up my own company, uh, Dawson Co. Homes, where we build and remodel and restore homes. So that's kind of how I got into it. I learned a lot of my stuff from people that I've worked with. Um, I learned a lot of my stuff from uh, reading journals and also YouTube and also just talking about this stuff all the time and researching it wherever I can. And then just the more you engineer a house, the more you see what they look for and, and require and, and framing techniques and all that different stuff. So accumulation of, of being in the trades for what, 13, 14 years? Um, has taught me how to do a lot of different things and um, when I first started working construction I was kind of the gopher so um, I was kind of just uh, prostituted around if I, for lack of a better word uh, if electrician was on the job site and I was just the you know the go sweep that guy uh, they would say hey you could take John and he can help you with you know your electrical needs if you need an extra pair of hands or if the plumber was on job site they'd be like hey John can help the plumber if he needs an extra pair of hands so uh, the first couple years I was on the trade, I, I worked with co concrete contractors, framing contractors, plumbing, electrical, um, HVAC. So I kind of learned a little bit. I was always asking questions because I'm curious. I think I find it interesting. So um, that's how I kind of learned a lot of the different things um, um, during the build process because I know a lot of people only know one section. So I was blessed to be able to kind of learn a bunch of different um, options. So that's how that worked. Um, another question that I get is, uh, let's see. I think that's mainly the, mainly the big questions. I get questions about like what my tool bags are, what tools I like to use. And um, if you guys wanna see that, go to my Instagram. And then I will make some tool videos and whatnot here, but um, overall that, you know, that's a different conversation. So let's walk into the house and I'm gonna tell you why we're building this off-grid build and why we bought this land to live La Vida Loca. What I wanted to talk to you guys today is kind of give a reason why we're building this house, why we're out here in the middle of nowhere doing what we're doing. Um, well, not necessarily in the middle of nowhere, but outside of town. Um, there's a couple reasons. One is just, I, I feel like uh, 
recently we've realized that dependency sucks, right? It sucks to be dependent on a power grid that goes out in the middle of winter. Um, it sucks to be dependent on, on constantly uh, using um, the electrical uh, uh, grid that goes up. I mean, our electrical in, at our ranch now is, is, I think, four or five times the price that it was, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. Um, same thing with gas, same thing with uh, water. And it's, it's gotten to the point where I'm like, I really don't like being dependent on all these other people and variables and systems to uh, keep my life functioning. So in the end, I've always wanted to be on the country, right? We have horses, uh, we've been wanting to get cattle, we have chickens, we have all these, these things that we need land to do. And right now we have land, but we need more because we're expanding. And I think the main reason, and I walk around in circles when I talk, sorry. Um, the main reason we're doing this is to be more self-sufficient and to do what makes us happy, right? And I feel like a lot of people spend so much time and effort and, and stress and worry on their job and making sure their job's happy with them, making sure their boss is pleased with what they're doing, making sure that everything in their life for their job is going right because if their job goes away, their livelihood goes away. And I personally don't like that mentality. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but for me, I don't want to constantly live life being like, ah, my boss needs me to be here. I can't go to the recital. My boss needs me to, to travel here for a couple weeks. I can't, you know, be there for your birthday. Like, I, I would lose so many jobs if, if I had a job that, that told me I couldn't go to my daughter's fall recital. Like, I, I, I would just go to the fall recital. I'd be like, yeah, this job is temporary, and I'm going to regret missing those things. So that's my mentality on life, and that's why I've always kind of worked for myself since I was what, 20, around 20, I think, um, so 10 years. So in the end, the reason we're doing this is we want horse property, we want chicken property, we want a place where our girls can come and play and, and build them playhouses and go fishing and do all this different stuff. We wanna be able to have their friends over, we wanna be able to expand and uh, uh, trail ride and do all these different things so that we don't need uh, a system or a city or a city council or any type of meetings to say, hey, we're gonna build you a park, hey, we're gonna make crime safer in our neighborhoods. Like, we, own the amount of space that that three neighborhoods could fit into right so it really just gives us the ability to live life the way we love to live life and it is exhausting and this is very difficult and it's very taxing but in the end why are we so willing to be tried and taxed and 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 and, and not taxed in like the, the financial sense but like uh, physically and, and mentally worn down for a job that we don't even like when we could do that and put that same amount of effort into doing what we love and 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 if we fail we fail at achieving what we love and if we succeed we got it we made it right so that's been my mentality I would rather fail miserably at chasing my dream than succeed at chasing something I genuinely don't care about so that's why I'm up here building this house that's why we're spending every waking minute trying to Cre uh, become self-sufficient to make sure our business is like our clothing brand and 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 my uh, uh, um, uh, marketing business and all these things take off so that we can fund our lives separate from the grid as as they say so that's what I mean when I say we're doing an off-grid build is we are we are trying to detach ourselves from being dependent on as many aspects as possible now you're always gonna be dependent on something but the more self-sufficient you can become the more bills you knock off your monthly uh, budget, the more freedom you have internally, the less stress you have, and the more happy you can be. So if you guys are sitting there being like, I've always wanted to, I've always thought about, I've always really, you know, thought I'd be good at, go do it, go do it. Like it is time, this is the day and age where people just say, look, there's a dream of mine out there and I've been ignoring it. I've been placing so much power on why I shouldn't, can't, or won't do it versus just going out there and going full blast ahead at it. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Let's take a walk around the property real quick. I'm gonna show you a few spots that I cleared with the skits there, kind of what we're working with here. And then uh, next week is gonna be an episode about framing up these roofs here. Guys, so this is, that is, we're gonna have French doors there. That's the master bedroom. This is gonna come out uh, the master and all of this property going this way is ours. As a matter of fact, 30 feet this way uh, is where our neighboring property starts. They have 300 and something acres. Um, they're great people, they're awesome people. Uh, they're gonna start building on their property soon. Um, so that's our closest neighbor and I think they're building a couple miles that way. So we're not worried 
about uh, being close to anybody. And all this over here is ours. So um, the reason we put this house here on the very end of our property is because it is gonna be the guest house. So we wanted to give the guest house privacy from when we do build our main house over on the other part of the property so that they could be independent and have their own privacy and not have to worry about, you know, having people right in your business. Uh, we are going to be creating a road that's going to go down here. It's going to go over a little creek. Potentially, we might build a bridge at some point. It'll go over there, and you can drive directly over to the guest house. Um, so it'll be it'll be super nice and, and, and fun. Um, this is going to be the driveway. The front of the house is actually going to have an entrance right there, and then we're going to have a wraparound porch that's going to go all the way around, and then there's going to be a porch out in front of the master bedroom. So you're going to have a kind of an L-shaped porch that goes all the way around this house. Um, down that way is a bunch of trees. Uh, this was covered in trees. I cleared it. You can kind of see the big pile of uh, tree over, trees over there. Uh, so that's kind of something I still got to deal with. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So uh, we cut up a bunch of trees. I still got to get the stumps out to give us this driveway here. Um, and I'll take you guys over there and we can look at the uh, other spot I cleared. Um, and it's 17 acres of land that's never been developed. It's been cattle land for pretty much ever um, so it means it is just thick with trees a lot of cedar trees a few oak trees so uh, making sure that we clear out all around the oak trees so that they can get the proper uh, sunlight and water that they need um, and then keeping a few of these uh, cedar trees um, as we do want to have some type of um, uh, trees you know if if we can't have all oak trees another oak tree there so overall guys let me see I'm gonna show you where the house is so I'm up here on, on one of the hills and I'm going to show you where the where the build site is, where you guys have been watching me build the guest house. If you guys look right there through the trees, you can see way over there. That's the build. But we're not there right now because we're busy clearing all this up here. So I will say it's been very difficult because of all these rocks, which are awesome and we're probably going to be using them. Uh, for some landscaping and other things but you can see the view of the land which is pretty awesome town is way past that post over there or that cell phone tower so positive about this is we're way out of town also positive about this is we have cell reception which is really nice negative is right now it is super windy so uh, anyway let's go look at a few other places i've cleared you can see here here's another pile of brush right over there it's where I killed the rattlesnake, uh, which was gross. I, so you can see these big piles of just brush. Um, I need to move this one over to here. Uh, but yeah, wow. It has just been intense. You can see there, got one pile right there, but then also way off in the distance, you can see another pile I cleared. All of that over there, uh, that's gonna be the entrance to the property. Again, you guys can see the build way over there. We have this road here, which leads into it over there. Um, here's my truck, because I didn't wanna walk all the way over here to this kister. Um, but yeah, guys, appreciate you stopping by. Much love to you all. If you haven't, please go subscribe and like the video and uh, comment if you have any questions and I'll answer them um, in another video. Episode eight, I believe, will be coming soon and I'll be showing you the wood framing and um, all that different stuff, how to cut rafters and stuff like that. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, I'll see you next Thursday. And if you guys don't know, we drop an episode every Thursday evening. So if you want to stay tuned, we drop an episode every Thursday. So just keep an eye out, on, keep an eye out for them every Thursday night. And um, I'll see you guys next Thursday.